midweek service. Uh, so again, we will be having a worship from the houses. At the moment, we have temporarily stopped again all the activity in the training house for a time being. And uh, that's what we'll be. And we encourage everyone. Actually, we are in a lockdown. This is called Arabic lockdown, where they don't allow relatives and friends to meet, but they allow everybody to meet outside, but they don't want to allow inside the house. That's what's called Arabic lockdown. So we are in Arabic lockdown at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and they are just kind of getting it so we are just abiding by the law because there are some issues are coming there so are, are everyone are ready to worship our living God All right so amen. amen so it will be the worship and the opening prayer will be done by sister Marianne Marianne take over to you Amen. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will all rejoice and be glad in it. Indeed, no matter what the circumstance we have, no matter what situation we are in, indeed, the Lord is worthy to be praised. Amen. The Lord is worthy to be lifted up, to be lifted up in the midst of us tonight. Are we excited to praise the Lord tonight? Amen. Though I cannot see all your faces, but I believe, I can sense in my spirit that all of us are excited to meet the Lord tonight. And I pray that regardless of our setting, wherever we are right now, may we are in our respective houses, in our offices, maybe on the road walking. I believe that our hearts are united because we have one spirit and this spirit, the Holy Spirit that is within us will unite us in spirit and in truth as we worship the lord hallelujah let us pray heavenly father we thank you O lord we give you praise we give you glory O god for everything that you have done O lord we thank you father for your goodness we thank you O god for your grace we thank you O lord for your loving kindness O god we thank you for the strength lord that you have renewed in us we thank you, Father, for bringing us in this place once again, Lord, to worship you, to glorify no other name, Lord, to lift up no other name but the name of Jesus Christ alone, O oh God. Father, we decree and declare tonight, Lord, with our mouth, with our hearts, O oh Lord God, with our tongue, Lord, that you alone are God and that you alone is worthy to be lifted high in the midst of us tonight, O oh God. Father, have your way, have your will in the midst of us. Be glorified, O oh Lord, as we sing our songs of praise and worship, O oh God. Let every knee bow, Lord, and every tongue confess that you alone are God. We give you praise, we give you glory, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's sing the song. We can clap our hands. Worship the Lord with gladness. Hallelujah. Every tribe will see you glory. Every nation bow before you. All the treasure turn to ashes in the light of you. Pray. 
glory, honor, and strength unto our God, unto our God, madness, endless, love, and restraint. This is our God, ever in time, praise and glory, honor, and strength unto our God, unto our God, madness, endless, love, and restraint. This is our God. Ever is trusting. Ayo, ayo, where you are. 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 There is no one like our God. Yes, so we declare. There is no one like our God. No one. There is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. Wala kang katulad o Diyos. 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 There is no one like our God. No one. There is no one like our God. We declare. There is no one like our God. There is no one like a God. Praise and glory, honor and strength unto our God, unto our God. Madness, endless, love and peace. This is our God. Every shot sing praise and glory, honor and strength unto our God, unto our God. Madness, endless, love and peace. This is our God, ever in God's name. Ayo, ayo, where you are. 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 There is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. No one. There is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. Yes, Lord, hallelujah, oh God. Indeed, there is no one else besides you, Lord. There is no one else besides you, oh God. Hallelujah. We give you our worship, oh Lord. It is you, Lord, that we desire, oh Lord God. Our help comes from you, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Psalm 121 verses 1 to 2 says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from where comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Oh, our help comes from you, Lord. That's your name, oh God. God, I love you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you, you where my help comes from, give me wisdom, you know just what to do, yeah. Oh, we worship you, we worship you, Lord. hallelujah, God. God, I look to you, I won't be overwhelmed, give me vision, to see things like you do, God, I look to you, you where my help comes from, give me wisdom, you know just what to do. And I will love you, Lord, my strength. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. Oh, I love you, Lord. You are a 
our help, oh God. My energy, I want the overwhelm. Give me vision. It things like you do. God, I look to you. You where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do. And I will love you, Lord, my friend. And I will love you, Lord, my feet. And I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. I will I will love you, Lord, my sin. And I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Oh, hallelujah, our God reigns. Forever, all my days, hallelujah. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah. God, our help comes from you alone, Lord. Our help comes from you alone, oh God. We cannot trust men, Lord, for men fails, oh God. But Lord, we put our hope, our trust in you, oh Lord God. Because you have said in your words, Lord, that those who put their trust in you, oh Lord, will never be put to shame, oh God. Father, be, be glorified, oh God. Be lifted high, oh Lord, in the midst of us tonight, oh God. And even not just tonight, Lord, but all the days of our lives, oh God. Oh, Lord, we give you glory, oh, God. We give you praise for you are worthy. You are worthy, oh, Lord. Be exalted, oh, God. Hallelujah. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We honor you, oh, Lord, God. We lift you up, oh, Lord. Receive the glory. Receive the praise, oh, God, that is due to you. Receive it all, oh, God. We bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we all decree and declare. Amen and amen. 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 So once again, as we had a time of worship, and I believe that because
presence are there with us because we are all daily living in the presence of God and we carry the presence of God. And we are praying soon, as soon as possible, that the government will open the whole place for the events and then we can start our physical service. Now today, uh, our preacher is one of our elder of the church and he's one of the pastor also from Giadera and Gisays. And he's a very good, jolly, always smiling uh, friend, also a good friend and also always there, his zeal is always there for the Lord. And we have seen how God has used him also. You know, he's been with us for a long time and how God has been used. He converted the 417 cell group into Giadera. Uh, and then they, from Giadera, they started GIC. And from the GIC, then they started GIGISES. And he's a great teacher of the word of God. And I also love when he teach, not only him, but his wife also, both of them. They're very great in, uh, anointed teacher of God because God has blessed them in that anointing, that gifting God has given to them. And today we will be having a pre-recorded message of his preaching, right? Because he requested to have a pre-recorded doing it because he doesn't want to disturb in the lines and everything. But before he preaches it, I will ask him only to open up and then we will open uh, the pre-recording will be ready. So Ryan, are you there? Can you just open your mic and camera and just say hi, hello, and whatever, and let's start it. Pastor Ryan. Ryan, are you there? You still logged Yes, I'm here. Just right. Right, bro. Okay. So I will, hello. I will, yes, that's our Ryan. Right. right, okay. So, Ryan, to you, then we will start the recording. Anything you want to say before the recording or start the recorded message? Uh, later, after the message. Okay, after that. So, Thank you. everybody be ready and let's completely watch the video. Do not put off your video also, but please listen to the word. It is a pre-recorded message. This is the first time that we will be using a pre-recorded -pre message in our GIA Dubai. So, Tuate Shine, can you start it? God is good all the time. All the time. Yes. Can you say to the person next to you, you are blessed? Yes. The other person on the other side, you are highly favored. Yes. Amen. So for this Friday, uh, I see new faces. Welcome, bros. Welcome. And for the others, welcome back again. And say, you welcome. Welcome. Right now, you cannot shake hands. See, see so near, but yet so far, <laughs> especially for the couples. So sorry. Let's just pray that this situation will be solved soon, so that couples can sit right next to each other again. You know, bro? Yeah. Yeah. It is best to uh, attend services and you are sitting right beside your wife or your husband. Amen. It is. Uh, it is. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. So this morning, uh, I'm, I'm not going to share a long uh, preaching, hopefully, amen, because I always break my promises, amen. But uh, I just want to encourage each one of us with this word from God. Uh, God wants to say to us this morning that He remembers us. Amen. Our text today, if you have your Bible, open it in Psalms 115, verse 12 to 13. It says that the Lord remembers us and will bless us. See, so, huh? can you say it loudly to yourself, the Lord remembers me? The Lord remembers me. Say it again, the Lord remembers me. The Lord remembers me. Then can you say to the person next to you, you know the Lord remembers you. The Lord remembers you. Right now he remembers you. Right now he remembers you. So God does remember us and then he said he will bless us. He will bless those who fear the Lord. How many of you here fear the Lord? Fear simply means respect God. Amen. I believe all of us here respect God because we wouldn't be here if we don't give respect to God. Amen. We will not attend services if we don't respect Him. Amen. So we, we fear God. This is not fear that we are afraid of God. No, God does not condemn us. He loves us. Amen. So, but uh, he said this word, small and great alike, whether you are poor or poorer or poorest, <laughs> but 
speech or what else, then he does us know God will remember all of us and he bless us all the same. Amen. So today what I would like to do is just encourage you and give some comfort from the word of God. Now for many of us, um, what happened for the past four months is very hard uh, since, we, since the lockdown started. Some of you have lost your jobs, amen, and some of you have uh, no work, no pay. For some of you, your pay has already resumed, but still there's some deductions. And, and then, uh, for some of you, there's still the threat of losing jobs. Because even right now, economists say, to the, throughout the whole world, the effect of this coronavirus will be felt by the second half. And you think that once the lockdown is eased or removed, um, the situation will be better? No, it will not be, to be honest. Amen. Uh, as Apostle of the Bible says, let us be like Abraham, who faced the box. Amen. We, we, we cannot be, we don't say that uh, we have faith, so we put ourselves into, into an illusion that everything will be okay. No, for now, the world is not okay. But, there is a greater reality. Amen. God is good. Amen. No matter what happens in the world, God is with us. Amen. So, um, I just want to encourage you today. Yes, our current situation is a struggle. And in, in many times, uh, in these times of struggle, it is very easy to forget how much God loves us. Do you believe that? That no matter how hard the times would be, God still loves you. See, how can you say to that person next to you, you know God loves you. Can you still accept that word? despite of the situation. Does God really love me? Because in these very difficult times, it's so easy to say and ask and question, does God really love me? Or probably he might have already forgotten me. Or, I don't know. Um, why, why, so, why does it take so long to, to answer my prayer that he loves me? It's so easy to ask that question. It's so easy to forget that God cares for you. Because we always hear in the Bible, even Peter, cast all your cares to God because He cares for you. But now after casting all your cares, um, can you still um, accept that does God really care for me? Because until now, four months past, it seems God decided. Yes, I understand that this um, message from God today is just a reminder. Because I remember uh, Pastora Monet and other pastors have taught us about, or Pastora Pai, about what do you do when God decided? And, and you remember those uh, messages? You know, this is quite related today. But just one simple thought I would like to share with you today. And that's to remind you that you know you are not forgotten. Sit again. Say to the person, say to the person next to you, you are not forgotten. Again, say to the other person, you are not forgotten. In hard times, everybody else minds their own business, tama ba? Tama? I don't mind what happened to Kuya Aling. If my trouble comes to my company, each of us minds our own businesses. And, and sometimes we feel bad to our families back home because they don't understand the situation. They're still asking, where's your remittance right now? You missed your deadline? They don't understand their situation. Amen. And sometimes we feel bad about them because they, they seem to forget us when we are in the good times. And in the bad times, we need really their prayers, their support. We, they don't call us, probably because they don't also have blood. Because the situation is the same throughout the world. And at times when we are in trouble and we don't, the people whom we love and our friends don't to bother to call us, we say to ourselves, maybe they have forgotten me. They have not remembered me. How do you tell that? But you know, there's one person in this world that will never forget you. It is God. God loves you. And God never forgets you. There is a story in the book of Acts, uh, in Acts chapter 10, verse 30 to 30. This is about a Roman centurion named Cornelius. Um, as, uh, a centurion like Cornelius would probably have around at least 100 Roman soldiers. So he was a quite um, prominent uh, leader. So he was, uh, his position was uh, holding a very important, okay, yeah. intermission. Uh, 
Uh, he was holding a very important position uh, in, in the Roman military because uh, he was in charge for keeping all the stocks and supplies for the military occupation of Israel. Because Israel at that time was, they were under, uh, what's the term, they were under road, the road, amen. And the Cornelius was a, was a Roman soldier who was in charge to make sure that the supply of the, the food supply, the arm, uh, and by the military supplies are, are kept well and are supplied well and in time to all the Roman soldiers of Israel so that uh, Romans, the Rome, Romans can uh, fulfill their duty to keep Israel um, under their uh, rule. Now, but Cornelius was a man who has gotten frustrated with the Roman lifestyle. How many of you have, uh, have seen movies about Roman soldiers, how they behave? How many of you watch gladiators? You know, have you ever noticed their culture, their tradition? You know, one of the saddest culture in, in, the, in Rome before this, they have lots of gods, you know, goddesses, gods or goddesses. And one of their gods was a god who enjoys partying. How many of you enjoy partying in the world? You know, the Romans, they have this god that they just enjoy partying, they enjoy singing, they enjoy drinking, and they enjoy women. And this is their culture. This is part of their culture. Now, add on to that, they, in, they enjoy, uh, it's like, it's an, it's an offering to their, one of their gods if they keep on drinking, keep on normalizing, if they keep on, what else, uh, singing. So, this lifestyle was from that uh, Roman culture. And add on to that, uh, because they are soldiers, they're always in a struggle every day. But this uh, Cornelius, as probably he felt that he's gotten tired about this kind of culture. When he was um, when he was uh, in charge for throughout Israel, he noticed that there was a difference. Uh, these Jewish people, this Israel, although they are suffering much because they were under the rule of the Romans, yet there are wonderful uh, cultures or traditions that he can notice. Number one is they believe in God. In the end, when they believe in God, they try to live a holy life. That's one thing. Second thing is uh, they enjoy family life. And uh, other thing is, um, they are well disciplined people. These are the things Cornelius noticed. And that's why, uh, at some time, probably he accepted that faith. When, when you read the word God fearer in the Bible, it doesn't mean a person who is afraid of God. It means he's someone who goes to the synagogue because he accepted the faith, but he was not Jewish. So when, when you read that in the Bible, God fearer, he was not a Jewish, he's not an Israelite, but then um, uh, the Israelites uh, allow him to participate in synagogue gatherings because he feared God, meaning he believes in God, he, 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 he follows um, the faith. You know? So this was for religious. Uh, this is, is what Cornelius, I remember when, when we visited a uh, family yesterday, uh, si, si Ate, uh, there was one American who we asked, uh, which do you enjoy? Do you enjoy America or here? Uh, he said, uh, honestly, I don't want to go back to America. Because in Dubai, there is peace, there is family, you enjoy discipline. In America, there is no discipline. Wow. Uh, coming from an American, we thought that America was a greener pasture, but no, for him, no. Now, the same thing uh, happened to Cornelius. And so while he was overseeing Israel, he noticed that these Jewish people were different. And, uh, I, I understand, but for many of you, probably some people have told you, you know you are different. See, as a new family, you are different. You are different. People will really notice that somehow you are different from everyone else. And this was Cornelius' answer. But then one day, the good thing for this Cornelius, there was one great miracle that happened. And so um, the context of the story was God uh, uh, told Peter to visit his family, Cornelius. And then Peter asked Cornelius, why have you summoned for me? Why have you called for me? And then Cornelius answered, three days ago, I was in my house praying at this hour, at three in the afternoon. Suddenly, a man in shining clothes stood before me and he said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts. 
to the poor. Now, amazing, diba? For, uh, for a pagan uh, background person, for, for one day to realize na, uy, it's true. What they're believing, they believe in God, they believe in angels. Ah, it's amazing that these angels are really true. And that this is not just uh, a kind of tradition or a superstition or just part of culture. Cornelius himself experienced the reality of God. Now I really pray that uh, for us Christians, this being our Christian, our Christianity is not like by name. I really, you know, real Christianity is by experience. No, for me, yes, I never saw an angel in my life with shining clothes, but the Bible says probably each one of us have already met one and we never recognize. But that's why I always believe that before you die, God will always try to teach to you the gospel of salvation. We cannot say that, and you know, and you understand the will of God that uh, He doesn't want anyone to perish. Amen? So when a person dies, whether he is safe or not, is we really don't know. But God knows. He does give a chance. Now going back to Cornelius, uh, he experienced this now. This is reality. God is uh, good to him. Now, he said, um, God has, and he said, God has heard your prayer. That's amazing. For, for him who is a Roman soldier, who is not really from the Jewish roots, for God to hear his prayer. And God said, He remembered your gifts to the poor. Not that that's the most, probably the most awesome thing that Cornelius and uh, experience is that Cornelius realized that God was thinking about him. Sabi mo lang sa sarili mo, God is thinking about me. Again, God is thinking about me. Are you okay? If you can just hold on to the truth, you know, everyone might forget you, but you know, right now, God is thinking about you. Amen. God is, has been always remembering you. God thinks about you, and this is the, probably the best experience for this. Yes, um, seeing an angel face to face is nice, but probably for Cornelius, the, the very best experience yeah, he could have from God is a realization that God always remembered him. God remembered his prayer. God remembered his generosity and offering. Because of these hard times, probably some of you would complain, Lord, I'm a faithful tither. Have you forgotten all of the offerings I gave, the love for Jesus, the, the, the offering I gave to those in need when, when they were in hard times? It's so easy to us to say that to God. But right now, God, God says to you, you know, God is thinking about you. Amen? Are you understanding my point? That is the main point I would like to share today. Amen? Now, how many times we have come across in the so uh, songs inspired by this Psalms, chapter 8. It says in Psalms 8, for what is mankind that you are mindful of them? What, what are we, Lord, you are God, that you are mindful of us? What, what are we that you are always thinking about us? human beings that you care for us. God cares for each one of us. And whether he, you don't want to accept it or not, but that's reality. God cares for you more than you care about yourself. More than you expect to care about your future, God really cares for you. In the New translation says, what are mere mortals that we, you should think about them? Human beings that you should care for them. Amen. Say to the person next to you, God cares about you. I may not care about you. I may not care about you. I may not care about you, but God cares about you. Yes, to be honest, yes. Each one of us are of our own lives. Each one of us have our own troubles. Each of us pays rent. My friend. Each one of us are thinking of our peace, but then whether we, can, we would like to help or not, our, limit, our resources are limited. You know? And we keep on thinking about ourselves, but then God says, He cares for us. There's someone, there's one person. You may think right now that you're forgotten, but today, put it deep down in your heart that God remembers you. 
God has not forgotten you. God cares about your situation more than you ever cared for you. Amen? So, in the lockdown, the pandemic season, many of us learn and experience the reality of God. For some of us, many of us experience the healing power of God. Those who got infected, we experience by ourselves, boy, well, when, when they got sick, we thought, ah, tarakusan nyo na. Amen? They thought to themselves that maybe this is it. Amen? But for many, they experience God is really alive. He's a miracle working God. For some of us, we have experienced God's provision. Now, we cannot explain how we sustain through the four months without salary, but then we are still here. Have you ever noticed that? You are still here. That's the greatest blessing that God gives us. We, we are still here today. Amen? So we don't understand how we pass through that. We experience God. But for some of us um, who have not yet seen this, uh, the, the, uh, the, the miracles that God does to us, who have not yet experienced this, it's so easy to think that maybe God has really forgotten me. God has, uh, does not remember. So in Psalms 115, 12 to 13, again, our text today, the Lord remembers us and will bless us. We will go through it later. What does God do when He remembers us? He does mighty things for us in our lives. He will bless the people of Israel and bless the priests, the descendants of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both great and low. Amen. So God has not forgotten us. God will always remember us and He will always bless us. Amen. Now, how does um, in Isaiah 49, 13 to 16, it says, it explains how God cannot forget us. Why can't God forget us? It says, sing for joy, O heavens, and exalt, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing, for the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion in his afflicted. But Zion said, Zion here in our time simply refers to the church. Zion is the people of God. Amen. And that is who we are. We are the modern Zion. Amen. When we sing the Lord of Zion, simply means the Lord of the church. But then Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Yes, the, when, when, when Israel was in the hard times, God has sent them words that, no, no, don't fear not. Just believe. You are not forgotten. I am doing mighty things for you. I will, I will make a way for you in the desert. But despite these words, Israel still felt that, no, no, that God has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. For many of us, in a hard time, uh, we are just like that. Even though we hear um, uh, the message that when God is inside that, He's doing His thing. So you, we cannot see it right now, but He's definitely doing His thing because God is faithful, no matter how your faith is. But when you hear that word, you'll say, no, God has really forsaken me. God has really forgotten me. How many experience that? Yes, all of us experience that in our hard times, even though the word says, Rejoice in your affliction. Rejoice in times of trial. Diba? But what do you say? No, no. How can I rejoice? Diba? Uh, God is doing wonderful things. Uh, no? In good times or bad times, rejoice. But then, because we are in a, a difficult situation, you, you, you begin to have that bitter root in your heart. My bitterness na. Amen. If you are saddened by situation, you are anxious, uh, you feel like, it seems like you are pushing God away. You don't want to believe in what God says anymore. Amen. Now this is what happens to Israel at that time. Now the same thing is happening to us. Um, if this applies to the church, in bad times, but we tend to really um, uh, push God away from us. But then he said, verse 15, it says, next. It says, can a woman forget her nursing child? That she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even this may forget, yet I will not forget you. God is saying to you right now, God will never forget you. How many of you here are mothers? Can you, Adelaide, can you forget? I already forgot them. It's Yuri. Can you forget Yuri? Can you, can you, 
can you forget after uh, nursing him? Can you really forget as a mother? Yes, when, when God says to us, uh, it's impossible for a mother, unless kung naumisya talaga, no? Tatong beses na si Sarian. Amen. But I think so. Yes, he can be forgetful of small things, but can a, can a mother really forget about a child? Now, this is not a child that abandoned one's birth. This is a child who a mother has already nursed. You can not going to die. Who he really raised, who fed from her breast. Amen. So, God says, can a mother do that? Can he forget a child that you have brought up, you have nursed? It is impossible. No. But God said, no, even if mothers would forget, I will never forget you. Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, God never forgets you. God remembers you. Pastor, ulit-ulit ka. Kasi yun na talaga yung mensahe ko. This is just to remind us that God will never forget us. Now, God comes along, He attempts to comfort us. Uh, but then we tend to refuse God's word. So right now, this is probably because we are feeling so hurt, bitter, sad, anxious about our problems. But then again, today, God reminds you, He will never forget about you. Amen. Amen. So God spoke strongly to Israel. Can a mother forget a child in nurse? Impossible. But then God says, even if it is, I will never, ever, ever forget you. You may forget about yourself. Have you ever experienced forgetting about yourself? <laughs> Oh, but I'm not here. No, I'm not here. You may you may tend to forget about yourself, but God will never forget you. Amen. He will never forget. In Romans 8:31 to 12, it says, "But then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up us." Up for us all. How he, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Lord, why are not you, why why are you not answering my prayer right now? Is it so hard for you, Lord? Yes, there are lots of things we cannot understand. You know, because we are living through our physical eyes. You know, it, it's so easy, easy to say to God. But then God says, uh, why would God withhold anything good to you when He already offered His own begotten Son for your salvation? Amen. This this payment for your dewa, for your land, these are small, small things, my friend. <laughs> petty, petty things. Your salvation is far, far, far greater. And even for that, uh, He paid the price. He offered His own child just to save us. How much more for this earthly things. One day we will all die anyway. Amen. Amen. But then, yes, uh, this God's promise we will enjoy life. Are you enjoying your life? Amen. Enjoy your life. Amen. Hard times or good times, enjoy your life. That is a blessing to God. You know, sometimes you think that only the rich can enjoy. No, not all rich people enjoy life. Um, probably we are enjoying life even more than them. Amen. We are enjoying this pandemic situation. <laughs> All of them, they are afraid that they will get sick. For us, no. I will go to church. I will enjoy life. This is one kind of experience. This is something I can tell, I can tell to my graduate that, you know, in year 2000, there was a great pandemic. The whole world froze. Everyone was in lockdown, not allowed to go out for three months, but I survived that. Amen. Why? Because of God. Amen. God has never forsaken. This is a good testimony we can give to our grandchildren. Diba bro? Dalawa yung anak mo, diba? Oh no, may isa sa kaya. Ang 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 kalimutan. You survived that. You survived that. Diba? And then we can give it as a testimony to our next generation. He will gracious, he will not be told anything good from us. Amen. That's God's promise to us. Amen. So Isaiah, God continues, Isaiah 49, 16. Behold, I have engraved you in the palm of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. Now, just try to look at the palm of your hands. Can, can you see your palms? Is it nice? Is it hard or soft? Do you remember? 
remember when we were in the schooling days, elementary, high school, did you open your college? How many cheap notes have you written in your town? How many experience that? Oh, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> one plus one equals two. <laughs> How many experience that? Cheating, you putting in writing, and then too much perspiration, you play that, and everything is gone. <laughs> the ink is on your face. Now, it's funny, but we tend to write things which are important in the palm of our hands. Amen? Why do people put tattoos on their skin? Because they want to remember something for the rest of their life. Tama? Diba? Uh, John D. Naps Jam. Forever. Diba? Tattoo. Hi. Para ba ko tayo na ano? Diba? Why do people do those things? And because they want to remember something important for the rest of their life. And they don't want to forget about something. Amen? Now, uh, side note, I don't like tattoos. <laughs> I'm just giving an illustration. Amen? Uh, God doesn't want us to pierce our bodies. Amen? God doesn't want us to hurt our bodies. He loves our bodies. So don't tattoo yourself. Pastor said, God remembers me. <laughs> God, when God inscribes something in us, He puts it inside our hearts. It's amazing because you will remember that word from time to time. Oh, I remember that word from God. So going back to that illustration, uh, we try to remember things by inscribing at the hands, uh, uh, putting something in our hands. Now, but so God says to His people, you know, I have engraved you with the palm of my hands. What he's trying to say here is, I will never forget you, I am committed to you. Yeah. Amen? So God is committed to us. Everything I am doing right now with my hands is for you. Yeah. See, so if you think that God is not doing something for you, remember this verse. God has engraved your name in the palm of your hands. Open it. And then remember that, you know, God has written your name in the palm of his hands and everything he does with the work of his hands, he is doing it for me and for you. Amen. Amen? Amen. Always remember that. That is how important we are to God. It simply means that God cares for us. You are always at the forefront of my mind. You are always at the forefront of my heart. You are always at the forefront of everything I want to do in this world. All of us are in the palm of God's hand. Now, ang laki siguro ng palm ni Lord, no? Kayo pa lang. Ang dami natin. Don't pull me yun, ha? Amen? So, God has invited us there. And God, oh, God will never forget us because He has engraved us there. Diba? Amen? So, we should understand us. So, brothers and sisters, God will never forget us. You are never forgotten. People will forget you, fine. But God will never forget you. Amen? Heaven has not forgotten you. Sometimes, hard times, does God, is God also in, is heaven also in lockdown when the earth is in lockdown? Yes, people think like that. Maybe, maybe because the angels are also in quarantine. They are, uh, they, they, they are afraid of being infected in the virus, so no blessings for these three months. Uh, just hold on to yourself. Sometimes you feel like that. Maybe God is also afraid. Maybe if you touch me, you'll be infected. No, no, no. God will never forget you. Amen? God has, heaven has never forgotten you. Our Savior who, who shed His own blood for us, who saved us, will never be able to forget us. In Deuteronomy 31.6, it says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. You know, in every day of our lives, uh, we may not notice God. God is always going, walking before us. He's always there protecting us. He is watching at our back. He's watching at our side. Siguro, when, when we die in heaven one day, you can ask God, Lord, flashback my life, babe. How many times have you protected me? Especially in 2020, during the time of the pandemic virus. Just flash it back, Lord. Then you will recognize, oh, God, that's what is he there? 
Right now we cannot see it, we cannot see the angels guarding us, but the Bible says each one of us does have an angel. Amen. So God has stationed angels to surround us and protect us. Right now we cannot see it, but definitely when we go to heaven we can see all things. And that's why we should never be afraid. Deuteronomy 31 8. The Lord Himself goes before you. He will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. So right now, when you feel like discouraged, when you feel like uh, refusing God's word, don't refuse it. Accept God. This is the greater reality. Yes, we face the facts. We, we are in hard times, but you know God is good. He's doing His very best, more than we can imagine right now. Amen. Hebrews 13, 5, we all uh, uh, like this verse. It says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. How would you know that you already love money? Well, one reason is, one thing that will show you if you really begin to love money is when you can't let go of money. Especially if that money doesn't belong to you. <laughs> yes. Pastor, nagpapanama ka yata sa Dyson Notary? Yes. <laughs> then your task doesn't belong to you. Why are you withholding it? Why are not you giving it back to him? It just shows that you love that money more than you love God. Now I'm straight. Amen. How many of you love God? Do not withhold what's not for you. Amen. So that, that's a, uh, when, when you saw your brother or sister, your loved one already in me, God talks about your, your generosity and you still have spare money, why would you give it to them? Probably because you love money already. You cannot give it away. That would be something that you give it away. Mayroon ka naman, di ba? Same thing with money, my friend. When you realize that you love uh, money, you're not willing to give it away. That is when you begin to love money. And then God said, uh, we can be content because God promised He will never leave us nor forsake us. What is the key for us to be content in this world? In hard times, in good times, how can we feel contented? It is because we hold on to the promise to God that whatever happens, He will never leave us, He will never forsake us. He has never forgotten us. Amen. Now, how does God remember us? Psalms 25, 6 to 7. It says, Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of God. God has been always merciful and loving since the beginning of time. Since the, since, since the world began, God was already merciful and loving. Uh, you can say now, you know, the God in the Old Testament is a very dangerous God. He kills the clans per clans per clans. This is a God of genocide. No. God is, has been, always been merciful from of old. He never changed. That when it was Jesus' time, when it is the God the Son's time, He was more loving, He was more... No, God has never changed. He was always been merciful and loving from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. No. Let me pause there for a bit. God always remembers us, but He never remembers our sins. Sometimes it's amazing because, just like me, there are still times that we tend to remember yung kalokohan natin, the wicked things we do when we, before we get old again. How many of you remain that? Maybe we can ask God, how could God save me when I was so naughty before? When uh, I enjoy gambling with the chicken, the rooster, and then, uh, 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 when I like tom kids a lot, uh, but when there, wherever there is dead people, my damai, I am there, so gambling. How could God love me and save me? We really ask that question. And sometimes, for some many Christians, they really find it hard, a hard time to forget and forgive their own selves. Some of the mothers uh, made a mistake, uh, fell in love at a young age, uh, uh, like Tana, out of bed lab, they got child out of bed lab, and for the rest of their lives, they don't want to entertain suitors because they feel guilty for the rest of their life. You know, when God 
when we accepted the Lord God as our Lord and Savior, all of those past sins are already forgiven. It's forgotten. You know what I mean? Tell them when you are forgiven. You are forgiven. Your sins are forgotten. Sins are now question is, we always explain this to you, how can an all-knowing God forget about our sins? Well, in Isaiah 43, 25, it says, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. Yes, God is all-knowing. He does not forget. But then, He makes a decision to forget about all your sins. That's why I don't understand why some Christians, it is a struggle for them to pray. They still feel guilty. They don't understand that when, when they come to God in prayer, God, there is no condemnation in God. He doesn't remember your sins. When He forgives, He forgets. Um, in a human way, we say, I will forgive you, but I will never forget what you did. <laughs> That's not real forgiveness, my friend. When you forgive, you forget. Couples, don't store up ammunition for your wife. You never do this. Don't be. It simply means that every time you, you argue with your husband and, and wife, you are preparing a ministry. You are listing all his fault, and then when there's a clash, ah, you have done. <laughs> you know, God doesn't do that. If there's one thing God doesn't remember, and He chooses not to remember, it is our sins. That's why we also as Christians should learn to forgive and forget. Not only other people, but what we move on to just forgive and forget their sins. But we also need to learn to forgive and forget our own sins. God loves us. Amen. Our next verse in Psalms 25 verse 7, at 103 verse 12, it says, As far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our transgression from us. As far as the east from the west, there is no distance between east and west. Uh, the moment you go to east, west is also moving. The distance between the two is immeasurable. What God is saying here is, when He forgets your sins, He can never remember it. Because He chooses not to remember. Amen. God, the other sons would say, He has forgotten our, our sins and thrown it into the depths of the sea, in the sea of forgetfulness. God forgets our sins. So when God remembers us, He doesn't remember our sins. He doesn't remember us on our naughty days. So, ito na yung, this is my son, Jam, Jam or Janti, Janti, the naughty Janti. No, God doesn't remember us like that. Ikaw kasi nangigita ko kasi nangigita ko kasi So God doesn't remember us on our sins, on our past life. He sees us on what we could become. Diba? Uh, the, one of the definitions of love in the Bible is love always hope, love always does. Right now, you, you think that uh, you are not a good Christian in the end, and you're not worthy to go to church. You know, uh, God doesn't see you like that. God doesn't see you in your weaknesses. God sees you uh, on what you could become. Amen? Amen. Psalms 25 verse 7. What are the, ah, saan na ba tayo? Uh, 5 verse 7. So if God remembers us not on our sins, on our past life, how does He remember us? When God remembers us out of His love, God remembers us according to His love. It says, Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, transgressions according to your steadfast love, remember me. God remembers us because He loves us. That's the point. Do you think that God will remember you more because you are more better Christian than the other? No. God just remembers you and never forgets about you because He loves you. That's why when we all of us believe, how many believe that God is love? That God is love? <laughs> God, how many believe that God is love? John said, God is love. And we love is God. This is why God cannot forget us because He remembers us because of His love. God, God is all love. 
And when he's all that, you cannot forget him. Anong pala mo? Ay, mother ko yun. Ate, pa naman yan? Anong brother-in-law? Tsama ba? Ate, can you remember? Can you forget Jaja? No, di ba? Why? Sumabot ka bro. Why? Ano? Why? Why can Alan not forget his wife? Because he loves her. If you love someone, can you forget someone? No. Oh. Same thing with God. God remembers us out of his love. Now sometimes it's amazing because when I was young, uh, very young, I could not understand a parent's heart. Um, how can a uh, parent love their child? I was young, you know? I see parents and they have children who are really naughty, who throw rats to them and eggs to them. <laughs> and they do bad things to them, but then these parents still accept them. But, uh, if you want to say to them, can you not see what, how evil your child is? Uh, how naughty it is? You know, in the heart of a parent, it's different. Now that I'm a parent, I can understand. Uh, no matter how naughty your child is, you remember him not because of his sins. You remember him as a nice little boy or girl sitting on your lap. Every time I, I look at Mika, she's big, but you know, in my heart, she's still small. She's still like my little baby. Have you, I, I, do you remember that uh, story about um, uh, that uh, another syn synagogue leader, Rajeros, thought that uh, her little daughter was dying. Her daughter was not little anymore. He's 12 years old. She's 12 years old. But then from his heart, she is always little. How many, how many of your parents here? How many of you understand what I say? Every time you remember our children, we don't remember them as grown ups. Monster. <laughs> no, we always remember them as the little nice girl or boy. And now I understand that, oh, so this is what heart of a parent is. But they remember when they see their child, we see them from the eyes of them. They don't see them as um, um, wicked people. Uh, some of you might think that tea right now is very naughty. Yes, it's very naughty. <laughs> but you know, Bible says, that always hopes, that always does. That is the heart of a parent. You always hope that one day you will become a pastor. But he will do more greater things than what we did as parents. And this is what the heart of, of a father is. Now if you can understand that in a human level way, multiply that to infinity to God. Amen. Amen. God sees you, God remembers you, He will never forget you because He loves you. Amen. And when He loves you, diba? He will never forget. Kahit pagod na si Alan, galing trabaho, chan-chan pa rin yan. <laughs> I, I can never forget. I'm going to put to this. I'm going to So, God, no, why does God uh, love us? Simply because it says there, for the sake of your goodness. Why does God, how does God remember us? He remembers us out of his love. And why does God love us? Because he is good. How many of you believe? God is good? And all the time? When someone who is good, he always loves. Have you ever experienced that? Good people always love. Multiply that in infinity to God. Uh, he loves us because he is so good. And because he loves us, uh, he is so good, he remembers us and he remembers us out of his love. Not on what we've done. In a human level way, way uh, we tend to only remember people who, who we have benefited from, who has been kind to us. Kung sino yung those friends who are nice to me, who gave me uh, 200 dirhams love gift during my hard times, I will never forget that. We tend to be like that, diba? We tend to be like that, but you know God is not like that. Amen. God will always love you because He is good. And when He remembers you, He remembers you out of His love. Amen? Now, Romans 8, 
One, therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Always remember that. God never condemns you. And it's a little more God doesn't condemn you. God does not condemn you. Again, it's a little more God never condemns you. Even if you think that you are suffering right now because of your wrong decisions, because of your mistakes, that you are not safe. Uh, the, the pastor already told you that, that there are seven years of abundance and there is always seven years of famine. But that's what the Bible says. Life goes in season. But in the good times, you never say, oh, buti nga sayo. God is not like that. Amen? So there is no condemnation. Yes, part of these things might be because of our wrong decisions, but now when you come to God, there is no condemnation to God. God accepts that. It was good thing for us Christians, we learn um, so we don't forget what we learn from our decision. Then we, for the next time, yes, the same situation will happen again because time will come in seasons. Now you know what you will do. In good times you save, bad times you spend. Amen? So, but again, no condemnation in Christ. Next verse, Psalms 95, 7, it says, Again, remember not my sins of my youth of my consent. According to your steadfast love, remember for the sake of your goodness. What happens when God remembers us? Let me just give you five things. What does happen when God remembers us? What does God do? First thing is, when God remembers us, He blesses us. It says, the, our text, the Lord remembers me, us, and will bless us. Hindi nga sabihin mo nga sa sarili mo, the Lord remembers me, and He will bless me. Again, say it again to yourself, the Lord remembers me, and He will bless me. For many of you, you know, uh, when, when, uh, when I was in a hard time before, uh, this was not my verse, but my verse was one, Matthew chapter 6, uh, if you, uh, the, uh, I, most of you know, do not worry about your life. Isn't your life more than food? Oh, kaya nga, tumataba eh. Isn't your life more than food or the clothes you wear? That was how it has been my life. Parang one of my life verses. Um, Try to get hold of this word, even when you, before you fall asleep, say it. Put it inside your heart and confess it. When you are in the hard times, just confess, you know, the Lord remembers me, He will bless me. The Lord remembers me, He will bless me. Even when you wake up in the morning, just confess it, the Lord remembers me and He will bless me. Before you sleep, when you lie down, when you roll down on your, on your bed, just keep on saying, Confess the word of God. The Lord remembers me, and He remembers me. He will bless me. Parang 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 yung pastor. No, because it is the word of God. God will never forget you. God has never forgotten you. Amen. So in Psalms 102 to 5, next question is: We always God, Lord, oh, if you remember me. You said, you will bless me, but when are you going to bless me, Lord? Hey, Dan, when? 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 When will it come? You know, uh, the, I, I cannot answer everything, and I don't understand everything from the... Uh, uh, why does God is being so patient with our situation right now? But there are things that we can do while we're waiting. In Psalms 103, verse 2 to 5, it says, uh, when, when we confess that God remembers us, let us all, also remember all the good things that God has given to us already. It says that all that I am, praise the Lord, may I never forget the good things He does for me. Because in times of hard times, it's so easy to forget all of the blessings you already received from God. Because you are too focused on your current situation. You have forgotten how many times God has uh, saved you from a life and death situation, maybe health or provision from your uh, past two or three years. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. You know, God, God did not just uh, forgive us and save us to, to just allow us to suffer in this world. Right? How, how questionable is that? God saved you and then He allowed you uh, to suffer right now. No, God is not like that. God will uh, save us from our sins and He will also provide for us. And He heals all my disease. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is filled by days. 
Um, me and my wife, Jay Rose, there is not a, there is not a, a Christian life is not a walk in the park, na simple na. Um, there are times when we go out of budget, uh, we miss our budget, we spend more than, because suddenly uh, there is a tuition na hindi na account for team. And you know, in Dubai, if you're a parent, uh, if there is a fee na hindi mo na account beforehand, na problema na. And then books, you have not considered, you're out of budget. And then you, we also have the same problem as you. Where will, they, where will we get this tuition fee? Where will we get this book fee? Then what we do is, we try to remember, uh, isn't our life much better now than we were before? Especially when we, I got born again. But uh, we also experienced before living in condition. And before we experienced the red bug attacks. How many of you experienced? There was a time in Dubai na gabi no? Uh, hopefully now wala na. Uh, the red bug attacks. We did experience those things. And, but, but then when we, we go back to these things and try to remember all the good things God, then God has blessed us. If, then, if you keep on thinking and just thanking God, Lord, thank you. Uh, you healed J. Rose from his um, sugar. I thought she would lose his life because nabutas yung likod niya. The doctor yelled at me. It's your fault if she dies. <laughs> okay. Uh, we are thankful. If you keep on remembering those things, then you will find strength. You will find faith. If God has not left me before, why should He leave me now? So in the next few days, you will, you will be strengthened again with your faith. So in times when we are waiting, we remember all the good things of God instead of focusing problems in your eyes. Remember all the good things of God. Maybe you do it by listing uh, in a small note or just mentally trying to remember for the past two years all the good things you've done in, in, in your life. Then you will find strength. And yes, God is really faithful. If He helped me before, He will continually help me because He is faithful. Yeah. He loves me. And He loves His love never fails. Amen? So that is what God is. So the first thing that God does when He remembers us is He will bless us. Second thing, when God remembers us, He is concerned about us. So when He remembers us, He concerned about He is concerned about us. Now, when God remembers, He does not pass a thought in us. Now, when He remembers your name, Allen, ah, bahala na si Allen. No, bahala na. Come what may, Allen. But God is not like that. When, 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 when He remembers us, He presses us His thoughts about how are they doing? Uh, how, 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 how is He doing now? How many of you have loved ones? Um, so of course, not tayo. Uh, we, 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 we understand this in a human level way. We have loved ones in the Philippines who are far away from us. So every time we remember them, what is the first, the next thing that we think with ourselves? Kumusta na kaya siya? When we remember them, di ba? Yung mama ko, kumusta na kaya siya? That's the next thing. If you can understand that this, this in a human way, this is also applicable to God, but multiply it in infinity. When He remembers us, the next thing He thinks is, He just blesses us and then He is concerned about us. How is He right now? He doesn't just remember your name and just, kaya oh, na yan. No. He is concerned. He cares for us. This is who God is. In Exodus 2, 24, 25, God here is the Israel's groaning, and He remembered His covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. It may be hard for you to accept that God is God really concerned about me. Yes, God, God is really concerned about you. More than you can you ever think that you care for yourself. God cares much about you. He, he, he offered His only begotten Son for your salvation. Amen. He will never withhold anything good, any good thing for you. Just believe God. Just believe what He says. God is concerned about you. Exodus 24, 25. God heard their ESV translation. Next slide. Yeah. 
He says, and God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. God saw the people of Israel, and God knew. Now, simple thought is, God understands and knew, He understands, He knows about your condition right now. More than you know about yourself, about your condition. God knows it. God is concerned about it. God is more uh, concerned about your bills that is due, end of this month, end of this month, but I know. So God knows that, and He is concerned. He understands that. Amen. So, more than we, but uh, when, when, when you hear this kind of voice, it, it's hard to believe, but this is what faith is all about. You face the past, but then you also believe in the reality that God will never leave you and will never forsake you. God knew our the detail of every condition of ourselves, health-wise, physically, uh, financially, spiritually, He does. And He is concerned. He is doing things, good things for us. Exodus 3, 7, the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So God is concerned about us. Now the next question, again, we ask to God is, Lord, if you are concerned about me, why does it take so long for you to act? We lose patience. Well, um, it's, I, I cannot explain everything. But we cannot understand God. But our only hope is that one day, right now, you have, you have doubts, you have queries about God. Set aside those queries, and when you go to heaven, ask God. And He will show you what He has been doing about your doubts and queries. But don't let those doubts hinder you from coming to God. Brothers and sisters, I ask you. Amen. So, but one thing I can explain here is when God made a promise to Abraham in Abraham in Genesis chapter 1 to 2, it says, The Lord has said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. But then when God, when Abraham was dying, uh, God already told Abraham that your people, the Israelites, will go to Egypt and there they will stay for some time, but they will come back with wealth. Now the lesson there is, the reason why they have to stay, the Israelites have to stay a little more time in Egypt is because when they come out of Egypt, they become very wealthy. Do you remember that? So sometimes, uh, one of the things why God delays uh, His provision, His blessing, is because He is always merciful to the other side. In this world, this world is limited. Uh, God is always patient to the other side. God was very patient for the Egyptians. He was really, uh, because love always hopes. He was always hoping that the Egyptians would also change, but then they never did. So, he sent out, he remembered his people and, and um, brought them out of Egypt. But as they grow out, there was a transfer of wealth. In life, there will always be a transfer from one person to another. One gets promoted, one gets retained. If one gets retained, one gets, ano? Wala. Matatanda sa tabaho. If God wants to promote you, the only reason why he's keeping that, he's holding that right now, one of the reasons is he's also concerned with the other party that will be affected. Are you getting my thought? That's one of the things. God is patient to them. So that's why we have to be patient for us. Now remember, another wonderful illustration is Hannah in 1 Samuel 1, 5 to 7. Um, Hannah was always being persecuted by the other rival woman. Amen. The Lord uh, says, thanks for it. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her and the Lord has closed her womb. Because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her to till she went and would not eat. Now we all know uh, about the story of Hannah. She was always persecuted because she couldn't bear a child. 
So there was another rival woman, and every time she prays, she goes to Shaito. She uh, she's always been provoked. She was always being uh, ridiculed because she couldn't bear a child. But then one day, God remembered her. God, uh, yes, God it took some time to answer this prayer. Parang I, I could um, testify si Kuya Bong and Nati Bing. Why did God took so long? Eight years, if I'm not mistaken, para ibigay si baby head. Diba? Now, how can we uh, question God that we only just believe He will do it? And He did. He must be faithful. Amen? So, yes, it, it, it took some time. And in 1 Samuel 19 to 20, it says, Early the next morning, they rose and worshipped before the Lord and then went back to their home at Tantrama. And then made that to his wife, Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. Sometimes we, yes, we cannot understand right now, why only now, Lord? Why have you only remembered me now? Um, but then the Lord remembered her, so in the course of time, Anna became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel. Amen. So, right now, we cannot understand fully why God is so patient in this situation. Lord, why don't you just stop this coronavirus? Anyways, you're powerful. You can just blow it away and it's gone. Diba? God could do that. But then, we don't know. God is doing something. Um, something more, uh, which is more important. But, but as He does this, always remember, He will never forget us. Amen? In 2 Peter 3, 8 to 9, it says, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Probably, because, probably God is delaying to solve this uh, pandemic right now is because He's trying to be patient for the other unbelievers that could be saved because of this situation. And that's what the Bible says. So God is using this situation. No, this is not the judgment of God, mind you. This is, um, this pandemic happened because we are living in a foreign world. And it is dying. But then God allows it to happen because anyway, He works for the good, for the good of everything, for those who love God. Amen. Amen. So He is making use of this situation. So probably because He is patient right now because uh, He is expecting more people to get to know Him more in this situation. Amen. Which is far more important than our needs. Amen. Amen. So next, when God remembers us, that he frees us from our enemies. He remembered us in some in Psalms 120, 36-24-5. He remembered us and in our lowest state, his love endures forever and freed us from our enemies. So God remembers us in our lowest state when we are down, down, when we are down, when we feel down, when we feel sad. No, right now God remembers you in your situation. Amen. Why does He remember us? Again, because His love endures forever. Because of His love. Amen. And then He said He freed us. Another translation means He will rescue us from our foes. He will rescue us from our tormentors. Tormentors. Right now, some of you may have been tormented by the bill collectors, mga bangko, sa mga nakutangan natin. We cannot pay them right now. And you know, God said, um, he, he will help you. He will save you. He will rescue you from these bill collectors. And yes, you are harassed right now, yes. But He's doing also many of those things. Uh, we have experienced this, that God has shown favor from our bill collectors. They are more patient to us right now. Uh, and we had a hard time. We are more understanding in the situation right now because this situation is, does not only affect us, but the whole world. So favor flows to you. This kind of small favor that God, that people gives us is God working on their hearts. Amen. So these are things. Sometimes it's so easy to miss that. Fourth one, when God remembers us, He sets us free from the season of judgment that is going around us. Genesis 8.1 But God remembered Noah and all the beasts and, the, and all the livestock that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind blow over the earth and the water subsided. 
yes, uh, there was judgment. God delivered judgment in the time of Noah. Um, uh, the earth was full of wickedness that uh, he had to make the saddest decision. God really regretted it. If you read it in the Bible, God really, uh, parama, this is the hardest decision that God ever made in his life. He really flooded the whole earth to destroy all wickedness. So he, he, he brought judgment. But while he brought judgment, there was one family that he spared, and that was Noah, and one livestock, pair of livestock each, and then male and female. Now, then God remembered Noah and the livestock. So he relented and he made the wind blow over the earth and the water subsided. Now the point here is, that in the, there is judgment um, on the earth, when God gave judgment on the earth, now he remembered them that they were on the boat. Noah and all of these livestock cannot live in a boat forever. But they, they could help. But then, if you have male and female dog there, after two months, how many dogs will be there? They will not be contained in that boat. So he remembered them. Is they're going to multiply and they cannot live on forever in that boat. Now, how do you apply this to us? This pandemic, again, is not a judgment of God. But why is so God so patient? I don't know. I cannot answer. I give you two reasons. But then, God will not allow that we are going to have this pandemic situation for the rest of our lives. That's one thing for sure. Some people will say that, you know, this wearing of masks is the new normal. Maybe for one or two months when the vaccine is done, but next year, end of next year, probably no one will be wearing masks anymore. We will be sitting side by side again. Everything will go back to normal. Why? Because God will remember us. God understands that we cannot survive this situation for a long time. He will never forget about us. For the sake of those who he loved. But remember Abraham's prayer, uh, Moses, Abraham's prayer, Lord, if there are ten good people left in the city, will you not give you give judgment to him? No. How much more all of us? And I love but I'm not Christians in Dubai. Amen. So God loves us. Amen. Lastly, amen. yes, the postmodario. When God remembers us, he saves our families, relatives, and people that we love. How many was that? Ten. 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 Forty. Three. 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 <laughs> when God remembers us, He saves our families, relatives, and the people that we love. Genesis 19 and 9. So when God destroyed the cities of the plain, He remembered Abraham and He brought Lord out of the catastrophe that overthrew the cities when Lord had arrived. Why did God spare Lord? from um, this uh, difficulty. It is because of Abraham. If you can just uh, understand that, you know, how many of our loved ones God saves every day because He remembers us. Amen. You will be amazed uh, when you go to heaven one day and God says, you know, I have done this wonderful thing to your brother, to your daughter, to your child, to your mother, because I remember you. And you prayed for them that you care for them, so I, I bless them. God will show that all to all to of us. So another illustration, David, 1 Kings 11, 12, 13. Nevertheless, for the sake of David, your father, I will not do it during your lifetime. I will tear it out of the hand of your son, yet I will not tear the whole kingdom from him, but will give him one tribe for the sake of Judah, my servant, and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. 1 Kings 11, 34. It says, But I will not take the whole kingdom out of Solomon's hand. I made him ruler all the days of his life for the sake of David, my servant, whom I chose, and who obeyed my commands and decrees. Another verse. 1 Kings 8.19 Nevertheless, for the sake of his servant David, the Lord was not willing to destroy Judah. He had promised to maintain a love for David and his descendants forever. Now, background of the story. Solomon was blessed because of David. And because Solomon lived a wicked life, he was not like David who lived uh, a man after God's own heart. God said, your kingdom will be destroyed. But I will not destroy, I will not divide this kingdom into Judah and Israel during your time because of David. 
I will do it after your child, during the grandchild of David. But then God said, even if I divide it, I will still keep one tribe, the tribe of Judah, under David, because of David. That is how God was so fun of David. Now, the point there is, we always keep on uh, hearing us now, the greatest legacy parents can give their children is to live right for God. Amen. Because God is going to bless them because of how we live our lives right in the eyes of God. That is the greatest legacy. The second point is our prayer. Uh, I don't have time to explain, but one of the kind of powerful characteristics of prayer is when you pray something, it is eternal. When you pray something, it is there. It is prayed, and it will be there forever. So as parents, when we pray for our children, or when we pray for our, uh, our own parents, or our loved ones, our friends, that prayer that you utter, that is eternal. That is forever. And God will never forget about it. He will remember it and He will answer it. Amen. Amen. So this is the greatest legacy that we give more than the pamana. Amen. That we can give financially. Um, the way we live our lives righteously. And the, the, the our prayers that we, we offer for our loved ones. God will answer them. And when He remembers us, He saves our lives, relatives, and even our loved ones. Uh, I understand that some of the things that God blesses me and Jesus today is because of the good things our parents did. And I, I, I believe to myself that God is even going to do more wonderful things to Mika, Abby, and Tim when He remembers us, or Jairus, for all uh, good things we do. God says when you serve Him, when you live a righteous life, and you pray the, the prayer, which is uh, eternal prayer, He will remember you. But God says, the power of the prayer of a righteous person avails much. And all of us are already made righteous in the eyes of God. Amen. So, have you learned something today? So, uh, when you go back home, I encourage you, um, confess this word in your heart. God remembers me, and He remembers me, He bless me. I am not forgotten. Before you sleep at night tonight, say to yourself in your prayers, in your devotion, God remembers me and He will bless me. When you wake up in the morning, God remembers me. I am not forgotten. Amen. Have you learned something? Shall we all rise? Hallelujah, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful uh, morning of God of just healing for your word of God. We thank you, Lord, for reminding us of God that we are your treasured possession, that you can never forget us, you will never leave us nor forsake us, because you are good, and when you remember us, you remember us out of your love, God. Thank you, God, for uh, you are worthy of all of the praises of God. Father, right now, uh, we know, God, that you are doing things um, uh, for us, God, for all, for all of us today. Uh, we remember, Lord, our brethren here and online, oh God, who are looking for jobs right now, God. Lord. We just ask you, Lord, we beg for your mercy, God. Bless them, oh God, with jobs, Lord. We know, God, that you have been them at the palm of your hands. Lord, do not forget them, oh God. Remember them right now. And we pray, Lord, uh, we ask for your mercy, oh God, to not withhold these jobs from them, oh God. We pray for our loved ones, oh God, our friends, our church needs, oh God, who are in a no work, no pay situation, whom their salaries are cut off. Lord, you are a good God, you are a gracious God, Lord. You will not withhold these salaries from them. So right now, we just pray, oh God, bless their companies right now, God. Bless them with more jobs, oh God, with more works, oh God, so that their salaries their salaries, their full salaries will be restored, oh God, in Jesus' name. But remember, Lord, our loved ones who are sick right now, God, Lord, we, we ask you, Lord, for our own sake right now, God, Lord, remember us, oh God, and have mercy on our loved ones, Lord, heal them, Lord, show to them the reality that you are a miracle working God, oh God, minister to each one of them, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful morning of listening to your word. We thank you that you remind us that you are always remembering us, that you are always thinking about us, that you care for us, that you love us, 
that you never leave us nor forsake us. Though we are not seeing it in our physical life, our eyes right now, we believe, Lord, being found in our hearts, Lord, let your word be planted deeply in our hearts. And as we confess, O oh God, you will show us miracles and wonders we could ever imagine, O oh God. All of these things we give thanks and give praise in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. So God is good all the time. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. <laughs> Actually, uh, I hope you learned something from the uh, from the uh, sermon. Uh, actually, I was really hoping that um, uh, this Tuesday is going to be a live preaching because uh, we, we were uh, hoping that 15th, everyone will be, uh, uh, services will be open from the 15th, but uh, it's uh, still unfortunate that uh, uh, we cannot still gather. But uh, I'm really hoping that uh, I could teach in one of the Tuesdays live in, in the next, the next uh, uh, appointment, uh, the next uh, schedule that I will be given. So uh, I'm, I'm very glad uh, tonight. Um, actually, I'm just supposed to share a preaching. Uh, I actually prepared a separate preaching for the live one. So I would just keep it for the, the at, at that time when we, we will meet each other. Amen. Um, I'm just going to uh, proceed with the tithes and offering. Um, when, when, um, uh, uh, as as pastors, uh, one of the things we always pray uh, when when uh, when the pandemic was happening and when when we were experiencing the impact of the pandemic is, uh, what are we going to teach the church? Um, uh, how 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 should uh, what what thing should we teach our, our church members, especially in these hard times? How do we how do we teach them uh, to respond? And then when, when we were praying, uh, actually I remember this uh, one particular um, verse in Psalms about making vows to the Lord and, uh, and fulfilling them. Um, uh, in hard times, uh, I think it's but normal that people really turn back to God. It's, it's not uh, um, one, one of the good things that uh, difficulties cause to people is that they, they really turn to turn back to God and uh, um, when they turn back to God, uh, God really, uh, God really is good, and God is always willing to accept us uh, if we are sincere uh, of our desire to come back to God. So my my verse for the offering thought uh, tonight is in Psalms seventy six verse eleven. It says, "Make vows to the Lord your God and fulfill them." So why am why am I teaching this? Uh, it's basically because um, in these hard times, one of the things we we can really respond. Uh, how um, one of the things we do to respond uh, in these hard times is to make vows to God. Now, vows are actually simply like um, relationship promise. Vows is a fancy way, it's an old way of saying promise. Uh, in our relationship, uh, in a human level way, we basically make promises to people. Uh, a relationship cannot be built without any promises. Uh, for example, today, uh, I promise to attend the service, so I should be there. Uh, yes, the world teaches us that promises are meant to be broken, but uh, in, in the Bible, uh, when God says, when you make a vow, when you make a promise, you need to fulfill them. Amen. So it's very important for us when, uh, uh, when we make vows that we fulfill them. So it's part of building up relationships. Uh, when we promise a friend um, we will meet at 3 o'clock, we should be there as Christians because that's a promise, that's a vow. Uh, when we when we join the company, uh, we 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 promise that we will give our best uh, to the company. That's actually a promise. That's one of the promise. And uh, relationships cannot be built without any promise. So, as Christians, uh, God is reminding us right now that uh, uh, we we should when we make vows, we need to fulfill them. Now, why why I'm sharing this is uh, is that I remember this one uh, story in the Bible. Uh, it's a very uh, common story. Uh, it's about Jacob in G Genesis 28, 22, 22. Um, when Jacob was uh, the context of this story was that Jacob was fleeing away from his brother Esau because he deceived his father and he deceived his brother and uh, he he got the the prayer of the blessing from his father. So when Jacob was in Bethel. Uh, in this uh, chapter, 
he, when he ran away, he had nothing. Uh, other texts in the Bible says when he, he when, when he flee from his brother, he only had a stick with him. He only had a staff with him. There were no uh, wala siyang mga servants. He doesn't have any servants. He did not bring anything to him because he was running away. So one time when he reached Bethel, um, uh, she, uh, she, he was sleeping and he was sleeping on a stone. And then uh, the, the, the good news is that uh, the greatest, uh, the salvation encounter happened with Jacob when God reached out to him uh, in, in his time of uh, fleeing, in his time of hard times. Now, uh, the, the, the principle I want to share there is that in times of our difficulties, uh, it's always God who will always initiate uh, to us. You, God is always God. God is always loving. God is always good. So, in times of difficulties, sometimes we think that uh, we have to keep on chasing God. But to be honest with you, uh, from the Bible, it, it always says that God is always uh, even before we ask Him, He is already running towards us to help us. And the same thing happened to Jacob. Uh, when when Jacob was dream uh, was uh, was in a dream uh, in in this story Jacob was not even seeking God he was not uh, in the midst of his trouble he doesn't know God uh, he may yes maybe in, in our times he he grew up in a kind of Christian family but he doesn't really know God uh, he doesn't have any personal experience with God and he was not even seeking God he was sleeping probably depressed and uh, he was thinking to himself oh, what will happen to me in the future. Uh, just like many of us right now, uh, probably in this situation. But then God is really good. Uh, in our hard times, God will always be there. And uh, sometimes he just speaks a hope to us, speak message of encouragement to us. Uh, he, he reassures, he confirms his promises. So in verse 20, when, when then made, Jacob made a vow saying, um, if God will be with me and will watch me over on this journey, I am taking and and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return so safely to my father's household. Then the Lord will be my God and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give you a tent. So um, God, uh, in, in this uh, difficult situation in Jacob's life, uh, God promised Jacob uh, a threefold promise. First promise is God promised that uh, he will be with us. So right now, God reassures us that in this difficult situation that we are in, God will always be with us. It's a promise of uh, God's presence. That's the first promise that he that he, he he gave to Jacob during the salvation encounter. The second promise is that um, guidance and uh, protection. It says God will watch over me on this journey I am taking. So God even reassures us right now in this difficult situation. God 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 reconfirms that He is going to watch over us. So there's no need to fear uh, to be uh, infected by the virus. Anyways, if you get infected, you will still be healed because God is our healer. So uh, he will watch over us on this uh, journey that we are in, 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 in this time that we are in. And uh, the, the next uh, promise that God gave to Jacob was that he will give food to eat and clothes to wear. So it's a promise of provision. So threefold promises, God's presence, God's protection and guidance, and then God's provision. So in our hard times, uh, we are reminded that um, God, uh, God uh, still uh, reaffirms or confirms these promises to us. These promises, uh, uh, God still holds these promises, and he will fulfill it in our lives. Now, the, the question is, when, when God makes promises to us, how do we respond back to him? Well, for Jacob, he, he also made vows to God. He made promises to God. Um, um, when God made him a triple promise, Jacob also gave uh, a three threefold vow. So then Jacob, so uh, Jacob said, um, "The Lord will be my God." It's a commit. It's, it's a, a it's a promise of Jacob to be committed to God. That's the first thing we need to. Uh, how how uh, when when God makes promises to us, the first thing we need to do is make a commitment, make a vow that we should be committed to God. In times of difficulties. Uh, this is the time for us um, to be closer to God. We, we should commit ourselves to um, more uh, closest to God. Uh, in times of trouble, it's not the time to be separated from God. It's not the time to be away from the services. It's not the time to be away from uh, gatherings. It is the time for us to really dig in to our personal devotions, really dig in in prayer, dig in, in the word of God. 
uh, that this is the this is the time for that we are reminded right now that um, yes god confirms he confirms his promises so first thing we need to make a vow to him in this time of difficulty is uh, we commit ourselves to god secondly uh, jacob said and this stone that i have set up as a pillar will be god's house it talks about our commitment to a local church we should be planted in a church um sometimes um I, I i feel bad because yes uh, sometimes in times of trouble um you cannot find the other members you cannot find your brethren you can find you cannot find your sisters uh, everyone is busy um uh, conscious about their health everyone is conscious um, uh, about uh, um, about their needs uh, sometimes they forget that uh, their commitment to the church so in these times of trouble, uh, let me just remind you, um, let us renew our vow, our promises to God, because when we get born again, uh, we already made that promise to him that once we accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, we, 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 we pledge our allegiance to, Lord, to the Lordship of Jesus and we pledge allegiance to be committed to a church. Amen. So uh, let, let us be reminded uh, that we, we hold, uh, even though kahit na it's just online service, uh, not physical gathering yet, but uh, let us be committed uh, that uh, in every service, in every online gatherings that we have, we should always be there. Amen. And finally, um, the last vow that Jacob made is, is to God is, of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. So it's a commitment to return back the tithe. Amen. Now for, for Jacob, this is an easy thing because um, tithe is basically just a tenth of whatever increase that God gives you. So in, in, in the past few months, uh, uh, you will just take away uh, tithes, a tenth of whatever increase God gives you. So uh, one of the church, one, one, one of the things we always remind our church members is that, I mean, you don't have a salary, the salary you don't have to tithe because there's no increase. So when, when your salary is also cut, so... Uh, your 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 tight is should also be only on the increase that you receive. So there's no pressure. So if you miss your tights for the three months, you don't have to pay for the last three months tight. It it doesn't work like that. Uh, what I'm saying here, here, here is that uh, tight is basically based on God's goodness, God's provision. Uh, God blesses us first, and then we are able to give back and return a portion of it to Him. So without any blessing from God, so we cannot, we are not able to give back to Him. So the beauty of it all is that we are able to give back a tithe, a tenth. It's because God will bless us. And so uh, for 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 tonight, I I just um, uh, I just encourage everyone. Uh, I, I know uh, many people are in having maybe having difficulties uh, financially, especially so. Um, let, let us just uh, make vows to God. This is, this is a season that we make, uh, we, we make uh, promises to God and, and we fulfill them. And, 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 and uh, as, we, as we hold uh, firmly to the promises that God gives us, let us also fulfill the vows we make to God. Amen. So I hope you learned uh, something. And uh, sh shall I encourage everyone to um, raise your tights and let us pray. Hallelujah, we praise you, Lord, for this wonderful evening, O oh God, of just listening to your word and uh, pondering to your word, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus, for your good. You're so faithful in our lives. I am so happy, O oh God, and blessed, O oh God, to see all my, my brethren, O oh God, right now, even just uh, remotely, O oh God. But I'm happy to see them all, O oh God. And uh, we thank you, God, because you have been faithful to them. Uh, we are all here, Lord. We are still gathered here. Um, uh, listening to your word because of your grace, O oh God, because of your goodness to our lives. You remain, you are just faithful to us, O oh God. We are still standing in the midst of this situation, Lord, because you are good. Uh, you have always sustained us. Father, Lord, as, as, um, as we return back our tithes and our offering, O oh God, we just speak blessing upon blessing. We claim your promises back to our lives, O oh God, Lord. Uh, we, we understand, Lord, that we are able to give back to you because you give us first, O oh God. You first love us, O oh God. That's why we are able to return something, a portion of what we have to you, God. Lord, we pray, Lord, that um, you continually increase, Lord. You bless the work of our hands, Lord. I pray, Lord, right now, God, um, for all those who are looking for jobs, Lord, you, you will provide jobs for them, O oh God. Yes, 
um, the, in, in this situation right now, it's difficult to find jobs, but uh, we rely our, ourselves in you. We put our trust in you, God. You are not limited, oh God. You are able to do immeasurably, immeasurably more than we can hope and imagine, oh God. And Father, for those who are still cut in the salary, we pray, oh God, uh, that you will restore their full salaries by end of this month, oh God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Lord, we even speak, Lord, I even speak uh, protection, oh God, and uh, always, oh God, good health for all of those, uh, for all uh, Gia Dubai, oh God, all Gia uh, leaders and workers and members, oh God, Lord, we uh, speak their protection, Lord, protect them, Lord, as they go out every day in their jobs, oh God, Lord, uh, keep them away from the viruses again. And we also pray, Lord, that you are going to uh, end this pandemic soon, oh God, so uh, finally, Lord, in, in the next, you know, soon, oh God, we will be able to gather, oh God, we will be able to gather physically, Lord, and see each other face to face, oh God. Lord, to you be all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. 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 Let's give a clap offering to the Lord for the message that God remembers us and tights and offering tolls. Make your vow, right? Do not forget your vow. It's not only the tights and offering, but your vow is towards God, right? And uh, thank you, uh, Ryan, for the wonderful things that you're doing. And continuously, yes, we are waiting for physical service and we are going to invite you again for the physical services. Right? Uh, so again, as our Taishan offering, as you are sending it to the bank accounts, you can send it, you can hand it over to Gemma or Atiani, and then it will be recorded also. Thank you for all the faithful workers that who have been faithful in your vows in giving your offering and ties to the Lord. That is, you have been doing it for the last five months and in this pandemic time. So God bless you all. And uh, we have any newcomers here today? Any one newcomer who came here for the first time? Ate Annie was the one who came here for the second time. Anybody else who's here? Let's welcome Ryan for the first time in our service. <laughs> right, I, let's welcome him. And and anybody else is here? Okay, so praise God for the life of everyone who is attending from Dubai, attending from every part of the UAE, and attending some are attending from abroad, and some are attending from Philippines. We welcome everyone in our midweek service. We are so blessed that God is doing great and mighty things in the life of all of us, right? And remember this word today, God remembers us, right? Somebody write, do we remember God? But again, God remembers us and in his remembrance, he reminds us about his love to us, right? That's a wonderful thing it is. Okay, so before we go further and on other things, let's have testimony time. Anyone who want to testify that God has done great things, mighty things. You have been touched by the Lord. Your prayer has been answered by the Lord. Whatever it is, just give a glory to God by your testimony. Anyone else, just be brave to say, yes, I want to testify. Who is the one to testify about the goodness of God? Hello? Anyone? No one? Everyone wants to go home soon? Everyone are at home. You are at home only, right? You don't have to walk, right? <laughs> Come on. Anyone who wants to testify about the goodness of God, who wants to lift the name of Jesus and say thank you that God has done a great thing in your life, open your mic and speak. Me, bro. <laughs> Let me, yeah. Sunshine here. Uh, I would like to, text, uh, to testify the goodness of the Lord for our me, for me, and for my colleagues uh, who have gone our test uh, swab test last uh, Friday, and praise the Lord for an unanswered prayer. That even though we experience all almost all the symptoms of for COVID, and but we get negative and. <laughs> And praise the Lord for these um, uh, instances of our lives because we are able to share also that there is power in prayer also. And we share that to our to our boss and to my 
to my unbeliever uh, immediate supervisor and yeah they believe also in prayer and glory be to the lord because um all of us uh, instead of panicking or even though there are some instances also that my colleagues would like to have their swab test also because i think the pa of the of the boss has this um positive result but indeed the lord is good and all i always tell them that the lord is all good all the time and everything happens for a purpose it says there in romans 8 and this purpose is for the betterment of his people his chosen generation and and this uh, situation that has happened made us realize that we should know how to uh, give um, importance to the life that the Lord is giving to us every day of our lives. Amen. All glory to the Lord. Thank you. All glory to God for the information of everyone. They were exposed to the positive case in the office and they were all asked to go for the testing. And not only Shine also there, but Kate also works with Shine and both of them are negative because our God is a great God, right? Anyone else who wants to testify? Second one. Me, bro. Okay, go ahead. Um, good evening, everyone. I just want to thank the Lord for his goodness because it's been, I think, um, more than a year already or I don't know, yeah, maybe more than a year that um, there was a dispute between my brothers and sisters, my siblings. And uh, I've been praying for reconciliation for a long time and I almost gave up. But uh, when, I, when I read the parable of this um, persistent widow that she keeps on going back to the judge for, for justice and you know the justice just uh, tell her that, um, I, I tell to himself that, okay, I'll just give her justice because she will keep on bothering me. So maybe the Lord has been bothered about my prayers. I keep on praying and I thank the Lord because now we are talking um, all of us are already because we have a chat group so i can see that uh, my my sister is not talking to the youngest one like that my brother is not talking to the second uh second child like that so now we 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 um talk to each other joyfully in the chat already and uh i'm, I'm so thankful because i know god is moving in the in the in their hearts and um i keep praying that one day uh, we will be able to uh, attend also like Bible study or um, services uh, soon because our times are really different. One is in the Philippines, one is in Australia, and our um, eldest is in the ship. So I praise the Lord. I, I really thank the Lord truly indeed that if we will not give up in prayer, God will answer our prayer. Um, all glory to God. Po. Thank you, Brother Go. It's very important first things to reconcile with our siblings, family, because everything starts from our house, right? No matter how it is, no matter Amen. once you become a believer. So your first priority is to reconcile with your brothers. Forgive them, even they unbelieve in the Lord, but let your testimony be in front of them that one day they will believe Jesus Christ through your testimony in the family. Praise God. Anybody else? Okay, anyone? Bro, really? me. Uh, one minute. Eh? Okay, Dennis, go ahead. After Dennis, Ate May will do it from Philippines. Yeah, Dennis. Dennis. Hi, all. I'm Dennis. I'm from Canada. My sister is Annibal. So I would like to give thanks to the Lord for the travel, travel mercy. So for keeping us sick last two weeks. Me and my wife, we had a long travel. It's three, three and a half hours. We're going to the lake. So uh god is really good even even uh, even even with a short prayer once your prayers is really really you know really really good and you really believe to god he will protect and provide everything so it's a long travel 110 kilometers per hour i'm following the rules of the traffic and then all of the cars even the 12 wheeler trucks are you know driving very very fast so I pray to God and my wife and thank God, you know what happened to us? We arrived home. Once we, we arrived at the parking, my car or my house garage parking, the check engine light came, came out. 
I was really happy and I really, really thank God because if that thing happened during that highway, we're in big trouble. I don't know anything when it comes to car troubleshooting. So God's really, really good. And I took the car to the Chevy uh, dealership and they diagnosed it, did everything for almost one day. And you know what happened, guys? The uh, service advisor, I don't, don't, don't know him, though he's a Filipino, he waived the diagnostic fee. And I read the work order. They did all the testing. You know what happened? It's really a miracle because the problem is just the deep stick. It was my fault before we traveled. I did check the, uh, the, the oil gauge, right? And I did not put it properly. That's why the check engine light came out. So God is really, really good. And I thank him also. This is my six months with you guys. I'm working at home and God is really, really, really good. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Dennis. God is always good. Okay. And remember, always as a family devotion, pray for your siblings, pray for your family, wherever they are. Ask God to cover them with the blood of Jesus Christ, right? And God really honor that. Yes, Ate May from Philippines. Ate, Sister Beauty May, go ahead. Good evening, bro. Good evening, brethren. Uh, I give thanks and glorify to our God that uh, I'm today is in this mo this morning actually from yesterday I always um follow up for my swab test result. Then the nurse told me this morning that it's not yet done, so we're just waiting. Maybe sometimes they say that the result is after 16 days, so. We are nine days in the hotel today. Uh, yes, uh, today. So I'm so very lonely because you know, inside in the hotel or the other room, you are not allowed to go outside, even to break the fresh air, to open your door. It's not allowed like that. So uh, around ten in the morning, two times I asked from the nurse. They are around eight o'clock. Oh no, nine o'clock also. They said there is no result. So around 10 o'clock, maybe I think around 10 to 80 or something, 11 o'clock. Then Mami Lin sent me a message. Then I tell her that I'm still her mommy like that. Then she she told me that I pray I pray for you to that you go home today. Praise be to God that I'm sure for your God is good. And around 12.30, I think that someone knocked to my door and said, Oh, you're released now. You have a... The, your the car in your place is waiting in the downstairs so i'm so very surprised because i'm not preparing yet because the time i'm just getting sleeping because of like i'm sad to know that how how many days we are like like that so glory be to the god that our result is uh negative and i'm already i am already out from the cage i'm already released from the cage then they're in the hotel so now i'm at home now so i can rest well with my uh also together my as jerick because we are not uh although we are not uh, together and uh, we are separate in hotel but we are together to send here so glory be to god but we have uh four days to stay in the inside the house or not uh, communicate to other people so praise be to god that answer prayer that god always give people for my prayer and also for the prayer for the brethren and for especially for mommy Lynn. thank you so much mommy Lynn, that i am at home now praise be to god glory to god that she is back in home and she has to finish 14 days so nine days she finished in the hotel now four days balance in the house Praise God for it. Uh, anyone else who wants to testify? We have one minute more. Let's welcome also Timothy. He came and he showed his face and he's gone away. Where is Timothy? Tim. Hello, Tim. How are you? That's the youngest son of Pastor Ryan. Anyone else? Okay, praise God so for the life of each and everyone. Again, there is a announcement we will play the announcement uh, and then i will also say some after the announcement we will have some word again
little bit. And then we'll close in prayer. Okay, as the announcement will come, uh, we know that on the 26th, we will be having our second day of the International Worker Convention. So those who register themselves, you can join in the morning 4.30. And if not, then you can, next day you will have a video available on the Facebook, that is the private and secret Facebook that we have created for international workers. You can watch on that. This week topic is all about practical, you know. And those who are able to join in the morning, you can join together. China, are you ready? Yeah. you uh, shine next time just put little extra time on the telephone number so that people can take the telephone number properly right so it comes and it goes nobody can see that amen so god bless you all everyone and thank you for being with us so uh, closing prayer will be done by kuya romil romil to you good evening everyone you heard my verse bro yeah we clear uh, but uh, we invite everyone to pray. God is good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful evening that you've given us. Oh, God, that uh, once again, oh, Lord, you guided us our online English service, Lord, with our brothers and sisters to listen and learn to your words, oh, God. Thank you so much, Father God, for the words that we have heard to the life of uh, your servants, our brother, Pastor Ryan, O oh God. Continually use him mightily in your kingdom, O oh God. Anoint him and uh, bless him more, Lord. And may his life be a channel of blessing, O oh Lord, to many people. And we pray, Father God, for your for the, word, the word that we have uh, learned from your word. We have heard be rooted in our hearts, O oh God. Thank you so much for your loving kindness, oh God. Thank you for the peace, for the blessing, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for your, always remind us as we are your children. No matter what, Lord, your promise is true that you will never leave us and forsake us, oh God. Thank you for your wisdom, wisdom from your words, oh God. 
And thank you for the guidance of your Holy Spirit, O God. Thank you for always remembering us as we are children always, God. You are always blessed us, O God, in many ways, O God. We are blessed because we are always tested and seeing your goodness, O God. Thank you for your faithfulness and unending love. We love you so much, Lord. Lord, thank you for your love and care. And we thank you for your hearing and answering our prayers in the name of Jesus. And tonight, Lord, we declare may your name be glorified now and forevermore in our lives, O God. For we have asked to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is our prayer and everybody says, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Okay. All glories of God. Boys, Mike, and just wish everybody open your mind. Unmute yourself. Hello, Mike. Hello. Hello, Paul. Hello. Jesus. Thank you, Pastor. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Yes. 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 Hello, everyone. Ati, hello, hello, Mayor. Hi, 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 Pepe. Bye bye po. Bye good night God bless. Bye. Good night again. Bye. 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 Yes, happy joy. Bless, mommy. God bless, everyone. Bless. See you on God bless, God bless. Happy birthday, Paul. Paul. Hi, mommy. Hello. Hi, Pastor Babes. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. God mommy. bless you. Good night. <laughs> Thank Good you night for all. playing. Good night, Paul. Andrin. Andrin. We're coming to your house. With the farmer. <laughs> See you all, everybody. God bless you. Take care. Have a good rest. Bye bye.